for your patience, everyone. Look, welcome to the uh, the AGM for the 82nd New Zealand Grasslands Association Conference, or at least the AGM that's attached to that uh, conference. Um, and the very, very first online one. Um, I kind of hope it's the last one as well. Uh, my name's Warren King. I'm the uh, president of the New Zealand Grasslands Association Executive. Look, there's a few technical things. Um, as Aaron mentioned before, uh, this is not nearly as locked down as the online event itself was. Um, so it's uh, there's, a, there's a degree of trust involved. Um, there are, uh, we're estimating, we've, we've stripped this AGM back to the to the bare minimum. Um, I'm assuming, so I'm working on the assumption that this AGM will probably be no more than, what do we think, maybe 35 or 40 minutes. So let's see how we go. The, the clock's now running. Um, I can confirm that we now have more than 25. So we have uh, met the requirements for a quorum. Uh, this webinar um, is being recorded, so uh, it will be available for viewing afterwards as well. Uh, should the opportunity arise, um, there uh, are options for um, for um, using the chat function uh, and also for um, for questions as well. Um, if we need to, we can set up polls at short notice. So, uh, for instance, if, if some of the um, uh, some of the elections are required, we can set up a, a, a poll for that. You will find links um, in the um, uh, in the email to all of the relevant documents as well. So you should have in front of you an agenda, the minutes from last year, uh, a, a full financial statement as well as a short statement as well. Um, and we've linked those in chat as well, Warren. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Aaron. So uh, you should have all those documents um, uh, at hand. Um, so let's let's begin. So I have uh, a number of apologies. Um, uh, Jay Roweth, Jay Scandrit, G Kerr, uh, D Woodfield, D Charlton, G Waghorn, S McKenzie, W Catto, N Meads. Are there any other apologies? No. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, move that these uh, apologies are accepted. A second, please. Laurie. Thank you, Laurie. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Thank you. We'll take that as passed. Um, next, we'll move to the minutes of the previous AGM. That's from uh, from Napier. Um, and again, I'm uh, I'm assuming that, you, that everyone's had a chance to have a flick through this. Um, are there any uh, uh, errors or corrections that we need to address? In that case, uh, I will move that we approve the minutes of the previous uh, AGM as being a true and accurate record of that meeting. And I second Bala. Oh, thank you, Bala. Bala as seconder. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any, Aye. Uh, anyone Aye. against? No, okay, and carried, thank you. Um, matters arising from the, uh, from the minutes. I think actually most of the things we need to pick up are in the agenda already. I don't know that there are any other matters that we need uh, uh, that, that arise from these uh, minutes. So I propose to move on. Um, with John joining us from the Koru Lounge in Christchurch, we have um, moved his item um, higher up in the agenda. So John, over to you. Thanks, Warren. Uh, I'm I'm bringing to you the New Zealand Grasslands Trust annual report for 2019-2020. There is a full copy of this uh, on the NZGA website, and I'm just going to really cover some of the high points uh, of the year's activities. Uh, firstly, the Levy Student Scholarships. Um, we award uh, two of these uh, to a student at Massey and two to student at um, students at Lincoln University. Each is $3,000 over one year. The Levy Scholarships are awarded this year to Selby Wilson and Taylor Hill from Lincoln University and Jessica Gooding and Troy Bosher from Massey University. The Farmer Awards uh, this year, there were two awards at the Napier Conference that went to John and Jan Bailey, uh, who own a number of farming properties on the East Coast, including Crooklewood Angus Stud, T Tiki Station and Tihanui Station, and also to Ivan and Sue uh, Naff, 
who own and operate Wairau Farm, uh, a dairy and dairy support uh, beef rearing irrigated farm uh, west of Hastings. We move to uh, the Grassland Regional Award. Uh, this year it was uh, awarded to Morris Gray. Uh, sorry, the last year was awarded to Morris Gray. Uh, he received this award in the APU Conference for recognition of his commitment and contribution to extension and consultancy in soil fertility and agronomy, uh, although he had been involved in a wide range of disciplines that extended from the East Cape to Wairapa. Uh, the inaugural David Scott Award uh, in the last year went to Holly Phillips. Uh, this was for Holly to go to conferences offshore. Of course, that didn't happen. Uh, so that is pending uh, uh, a, a free up of international travel in the next uh, year or so for Holly to, uh, to take up that award. Uh, the Ray Brown Trophy uh, last year uh, was awarded to Gavin Sheath for his work in pasture management and sustainable farming systems, and as a leader advocating for New Zealand pastoral research over the past 40 years. And many of you will be aware that this year, in the current year, uh, the Ray Brown Trophy has been awarded to uh, Dr. Gerald Rees. I, of course, report on that last year, but this is an opportunity uh, for you to, uh, to hear that because it was announced at the uh, virtual NZGA conference um, a month or so ago. And on Monday, I'll have the pleasure of actually presenting the trophy in person to Gerald uh, at his office offices in Wellington in front of his peers. So that will be uh, something I'm looking forward to doing. Um, and of course, for last year, sorry about the background noise, um, in a break from tradition and driven by the fallout from COVID-19, uh, the seminar series which we usually have for the Ray Brown Trophy winner uh, was in the last year uh, was run as an interview uh, using an electronic media platform. And I think that went reasonably well. It's not something that we want to do every year, but in this year, we had no choice really. In terms of other NZGT activities, uh, we continue to actively uh, seek a closer working relationship and cooperation with the executive. Uh, and we are participating uh, in assisting with the uh, Resilient Pastures uh, Symposium that I'm sure we'll be referred to uh, further in the, on in this meeting. In terms of our financial position, uh, at the end of June, 2020, uh, the market value of the investments was $695,884, compared to $695,243 the, uh, the year before. Uh, that gives us an equity position of uh, about $605,000, compared with $617 at the, last, at the same time last year. So we're still in a fairly healthy state. Um, I'd, just to finish off, um, I'd like to thank all trustees uh, who have contributed to the trust spheres during the year, and to Bruce Belgrave, uh, who continues to provide effective administrative support in his capacity as Secretary Treasurer. Current trustees are myself, uh, Errol Tom, who represents the Allot Trust, Derek Woodfield, Anders Crowfoot, Brian Guy, David Stevens, Pat Garden, Jacqueline Routh, and Alan Stewart. And we've also appreciated Warren King's attendance at trust meetings representing uh, the New Zealand Grasslands Association. So that is the report for the 2019-20 the year. And I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. Just a reminder that if you want to ask a question, you'll have to unmute your line. Uh, or it would be possible to use the chat function. Um, Over to you, Warren. Thank you, John, uh, and thank you, Aaron. So, <laughs> in fact, John, I was just going to just going to remind everybody that if not actually speaking, uh, can you please mute? But um, in fact, it was uh, it was where you're located that they uh, were getting the uh, the crosstalk from. Right. Um, it's traditional, I think, for, uh, for the president of the Grasslands Association to use this opportunity uh, to say thank you for a lot of people who do a lot of work that is uh, sometimes underappreciated. Um, 
and and this uh, this report will really be not much different from from what has happened in previous years as well. Uh, so firstly, I'd like to, um, uh, as I did during the online event itself, thank our family of sponsors for the continued support. These are it's been a really turbulent year, um, and even those businesses which have not suffered. Um, Directly, uh, there's been just a, a huge ramp up in uncertainty and risk as well. Um, I would like to particularly thank AgriSearch for their continuation as a premium sponsor of the association um, and also note with some pleasure that uh, AgriSearch's new chief executive, Sue Bidrose, is a new member of Grasslands. Uh, that's been a while since that's happened, so I'm really happy with that. Um, in addition, uh, the Grasslands Association is really grateful for the strong support demonstrated by the Grasslands Trust. It's great to see that uh, the close working relationship between the Trust and the, and the Association, uh, which was codified last year in the Memorandum of Wishes, uh, is now actually pr providing really tangible support to the Grasslands Association in what's been um, a really, as you know, as you all know, a really difficult year. I hope uh, all of you had a chance to experience the first ever uh, Grasslands Association online conference. And if you didn't, uh, or if you missed some of it, you will find the whole thing now available on the Grasslands Association YouTube channel. That's two sentences I never thought I would have to say. Uh, there were many people who worked really hard to ensure that it worked really effectively and, uh, and ran smoothly. We had more than 400 registrations across both days uh, and uh, as many as 130 people online at any one time. And we've got to be pretty happy with those metrics. That's, that's pretty extraordinary. Um, to, to get to that point, though, the Grasslands Association executive had to meet far more frequently than we, than we might have assumed uh, when we... Um, uh, you know, um, uh, when, we, when we met last November, uh, and some really difficult decisions had to be made. Uh, so I really genuinely appreciate the commitment and positive engagement of the executive as a whole. Um, and in particular, I'd like to single out um, Aaron Meikle and his team at uh, Beef and Lamb New Zealand as well, who were the steady hands on the technology tiller. Um, the invited keynote speakers were generous with their time and thoughtful on their content. Uh, some of these other uh, science content was delivered in a way that no one had ever tried before. Uh, so I'm very grateful to, uh, to all of the participants, all the people who made it so good. Uh, we've learned a lot from this experience and I think it will inform our thinking about future events and how we can uh, use those platforms, those digital platforms to maximize the impact of our, of our activities. Uh, next, I'd like to make special mention of uh, Chris Smith and uh, I know he's online, and the entire Invercargill local organising committee. They've had their plans for Invercargill completely disrupted, and they're going to have to back it up and do it all again. Um, it's a substantial commitment over that period of time, and, uh, um, and you really have stepped up. Um, the theme remains, meet milk and water, with winter management part of the focus. Um, and I'm delighted to be able to tell you that the New Zealand Agronomy Society will be joining us again next year uh, in Invercargill. And I'm really excited to also tell you that uh, we've got discussions at a reasonably advanced stage with the New Zealand Society of Animal Production to bring them on board as well. So it could be a really full program. Um, and just actually looking beyond Invercargill, uh, just to remind you the 2022 conference is planned for Rotorua. But before either of those things, um, oh, and, and I should mention, of course, uh, that Chris will, um, will speak about the conference specifically just at the end of this meeting. Um, before uh, Invercargill, of course, we have the Resilient Pasture Symposium in May, which will be held at Karapiro. Um, this is in part a follow-up uh, 10, years, 10 years on from the Pasture Persistence Symposium, which was held in Hamilton in 2011. There's been a lot of research uh, as, uh, on pasture performance as a result of that uh, symposium since 2011. And it's a, it's a topic that remains really critical for our industry. It's a big committee that's been driving the Resilient Pastures Symposium and I'm really grateful uh, to all of you who've worked so long to put together a really ambitious and comprehensive program. Uh, and I'd particularly like to thank David Chapman who's chaired that uh, and <laughs> And um, his relentless optimism uh, and sure-footedness through this has been uh, has been quite remarkable. Uh, and Mike Dodd, I believe, will speak to the Resilient Pasture Symposium uh, just at the end of this meeting too. Um, further, I'd like to thank Ruth Felshaw, our editor, um, up to the end of October this year. 
Um, she has made a significant contribution to the Grassmans Association um, during her tenure, bringing the journal into the modern era with uh, Scopus Listening and uh, the, the establishment and working with the editorial board, for example. We miss her already, and we're currently looking for, uh, for her successor, and there'll be big shoes to fill. Um, of course, many thanks go to the executive team, uh, Marie Casey and Glennis Thomas, for their work through the year in running the day-to-day -day management and financial, uh, financial transactions of the association. You may remember that as part of the executive's focus on good governance, the EO contract, the executive office contract, was publicly advertised. I was delighted that Marie and Glennis were the best candidates, and that they have now been recontracted. Marie and Glennis have supported NZGA for many years. And for many of you, she's the public face of the association. And I'm really happy that this is going to continue for a while yet. Um, I lastly want to acknowledge our members. You know, we do this for you uh, and your continued engagement, support and feedback makes this worthwhile. And of course, um, if you think we can do this better, just let us know. To finish, um, I just want to wish you all a safe and happy holiday and a safe and happy 2021 as well. I look forward to seeing you in Karapiro in May of next year and in Invercargill in November. Thank you. Um, I'm going to work on the assumption that there will be no, uh, no, no questions as a result of that, but I'm happy to uh, take some either now or later. Uh, if there are any, again, just use the, uh, the chat function. Um, next on the agenda though, I would like to pass the spotlight over to uh, Laurie for the audit committee report. Thanks, Laurie. Sorry, I'm just unmuting my computer. Uh, thanks very much, Warren. Um, this should be a short presentation. The um, accounts have been on, on the web page and a summary I've made is, is also there. Um, from an audit point of view, there's no, no issues that I need to draw attention to the um, members. If they wish to see the procedures for the audit committee, there's a, um, a list of procedures that the audit committee goes through throughout the year, and they're online on our, on our web page. The annual accounts, um, this reminds you that the purpose of the accounts is, is so that um, the organisation can meet its objectives. It's, it's not there to make a, um, make a surplus. There's nowhere in the constitution that says we have to make a surplus, but obviously we don't want to make a loss. So with that, I'd like to say, show that we had a surplus of $10,000, the 2020 year ended, and we managed to increase the sponsorship back up to 65,000. Um, we seem to have a core sponsorship of about 53,000, and um, we can make it up by getting extra sponsorship. There is a, a trending line of losing membership um, over the five years, if you've seen the summary, We've lost 100 members in the last five years, um, and the trend line is downwards, but I don't have a, an answer to what we Sorry, someone muted me. Um, and I said, I'm not sure what you heard. Um, as I say, there's a trending line downwards, and we're losing membership over the last five years. Um, not having a conference at this time of year usually attracts members, so that may have an effect on our membership, but then having a conference in May, a symposium in May, may, may alleviate that. Um, only other point to highlight that I'd like to make is that the journal, it costs us around 39,000 all up to produce a journal, and that's probably going to be ongoing um, costs that we, we bear. Um, other than that, um, I'll take any questions on the accounts. I did, did at the bottom of my um, summary say that I'd, I'd move the annual accounts be accepted by the members, but I just had a quick read of the constitution and the constitution does require me to, to have the um, presentation. All I have to do is present the accounts. They don't have to be accepted by the members. You can put questions in chat, or if you wish, um, we'll trust you, you can unmute your line and ask Laurie directly.
there was silence. I think we can um, take that as read or take that as accepted, Laurie. Thank you. Yep. I'll hand back to Warren. Thanks, Laurie. You covered that really well. Uh, and, and particularly that brief being uh, published ahead of time was um, uh, very, very useful. Um, the next item on the agenda is the election of officers. This is the um, uh, this is the thing that I'm most nervous about. Not not um, uh, not for the, uh, um, for the for the people involved, but for the process that we're going to go through. So, bear with um, the uh, the process or the the what we need to achieve here is the uh, the election of president, uh, the election of vice president. Uh, and we have two executive members um, whose time on that committee has uh, come up. Um, they've had their, their three years. They are, um, uh, so that's uh, Joe and uh, Joe Kerslake and Alistair Black have both uh, uh, had their three years. They are being uh, rotated off that committee. They have uh, both signaled their willingness to, uh, to stand again. Uh, and we have received uh, nominations and seconders uh, for them as well. So those we need to do those four things. Uh, firstly, the election for president, and then the election for vice president, and then the election for the two executive officers. So for the election of president, um, I will be vacating the chair, and I will pass that across to Laurie as vice president to lead. Sorry to um, correct you, it's actually in the Constitution, it's Marie's job to um, call for nominations. My apologies, and we did talk about this before. No, that's, um, uh, you're absolutely right, of course. Um, uh, sorry about that, Laurie. Uh, and uh, so to Marie, uh, if I can pass over to you then, please, to, uh, to lead the, uh, the election of a president and vice president, please. Okay, Warren. Um... So I would like to call for nominations for the president of the association. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, Laura, I'll, I'm quite happy to nominate Warren. I'll second that. Is that Chris? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, all those in favour? Hey, I ain't going to call for it. it. Might be other nominations. <laughs> I didn't think you could have any more nominations. Are there any other nominations for president? I'll take that silence as no. Um, so all those in favour? Aye. 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 Yep. Aye. Okay, now I'm going to, do you want me to pass it back to Warren? Or... Yes, please. No, no, you have to do, you have to do mine as well. A okay. and, and you have to do the, um, the electing members onto the executive as well. Okay, I'll call for nominations for the vice president. Um, Maritz Warren here, I'd like to uh, nominate uh, Laurie Copeland. And the seconder. Uh, John Carroll, second that. Thank you, John. Are there any other nominations for Vice President? There being no other nominations. Uh, oh, all those in favour, sorry. Aye. 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 Right. I now declare Warren and Laurie elected. Uh, now I'd like to call for nominations for uh, the two positions that are available by rotation on the executive. They've already been nominated on the... Well, they have. So, sorry, Joe Kerslake has been nominated by Warren King and seconded by Mike Dodd. And Alistair has been nominated by... Laurie Copeland, again seconded by Mike Dodd. Are there any further nominations for the executive? I'll take that silence as no. Uh, there being no other nominations, I declare Joe and Alistair elected and back on board. Welcome. Close. Slow clap. <laughs> and I'll hand it back to Warren. Uh, thanks, Marie. Yes, and congratulations, uh, Laurie, Joe, and Alistair. Um, hope you know what you've let yourself in for. Mm. Um, <laughs> the, um, 
Uh, seriously, though, it's really it's really good to uh, to have uh, some experienced hands, uh, and uh, and this committee has kind of been forged in fire. Really, this has been such a such a tough year. I'm really looking forward to having a relatively straightforward 2021. Uh, and speaking of 20, uh, 2021, um, a couple of things on the agenda. Firstly, um, can I uh, give the spotlight to Mike Dodd? Mike, tell us about the Resilient Pastures Symposium. Is checking my audio is okay? Yep. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, so yes, on behalf of the, so you, um, Warren's already uh, mentioned this, um, behalf of the committee, which is yeah about a uh, about a dozen strong, I think it's quite a quite a large committee, and uh, Dave Chapman leads it, but um, obviously unable to be here today. Um, we have uh, been dominantly engaged in the last uh, couple of months with um, some um, forty or so uh, authors of papers, either invited or submitted to that symposium. Um, so there's been really good uh, engagement with that. Um, and um, we have Grant <coughs> Douglas on board as the editor of that um, and managing that review process. Um, a number of you will have received requests um, and we thank you for your contribution to that part of the process. Uh, so the event itself, um, 11th and 12th of May in Hamilton, or at least close to Hamilton, Karapiro. Uh, the Don Rollins um, Rowing Centre, um, which is a very, very pleasant venue, um, and a venue which too has some flexibility uh, should we find ourselves um, back at level two at that point. Um, they have, um, uh, one of the things is to do with the, the, uh, the absence of a, of a cost should we have to cancel. Uh, and also their ability to um, split out to smaller groups uh, in fairly large rooms. Um, should we, you know, we should we need to meet for um, at level two with you know gatherings of less than a hundred or whatever that number may be. Um, so that's one of the um, one of the key things. The the original venue that we had um, tentatively booked, I guess, uh, is currently being used as a uh, MIQ. Um, so really the purpose of it um, is, is a focus on the future of our permanent um, or perennial pastures and, and the value that they bring to the sector and to the economy as a whole. Um, and just uh, to, to analyze the issues that, that kind of, I guess, hinder the achievement of, of resilience. Um, as Warren mentioned, it's a, it's a follow on from the 10 uh, year anniversary of the Pasture Persistence Symposium, again, that was held in Hamilton. Um, so a little bit of an update, uh, a little bit of a reset, um, but we're very much a focus on, on, um, on solutions uh, and improvements, not just in terms of practical stuff that can happen on farm, but in terms of uh, identifying for investors in the sector what they should be investing in. Um, so that's kind of the summary of it. Um, obviously, on behalf of invite you all to, um, to, to come along. Um, we, um, what else do I need to say? Um, that kind of covers it, does it, Warren? Yeah, thanks, Mike, that's really good. Um, the one thing that's become really apparent to me as well is that you've, uh, as the committee has had a real focus on uh, engagement with stakeholders. So there'll be a broad array of uh, some really significant industry stakeholders uh, in the room as well, and a mixture of present presentations and workshops. So I think it's um, uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a really important event. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, next, um, Chris, uh, I'd, I'd like to. Well, you've done this before. You know, um, the, the 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 grand invite to Invercargill next year. You delivered in Napier, and here we are again. Um, but I'm still really looking forward to being in Invercargill, mm. and I'm still really keen to hear from uh, from the, the the chair of the local organising committee. Over to you. Mm -hmm. Well, we were quite lucky this year that we managed to uh, secure both the venue for next year and also the transport museum without any issues. Both field days are confirmed as originally planned. Um, so it's now it's just a matter of ongoing uh, planning. 
We'll have to put the call out for papers, which I, I'm assuming Marie will do. Hopefully yep. the weather next year is the same as the week was this year. It was the hottest week in Southland this year in November when we were meant to be here. So hopefully next year is the same. And um, I'd like everyone to take the opportunity to come down and see what the South can offer. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, and please do pass my thanks on to the local organising committee. It's been, I mean, I know that the lead up to a uh, to a conference for a local organising committee must be a bit like a marathon, and you guys have had to run two of them end on end. So um, yeah, we're really very grateful to them. Um, and of course, uh, really looking forward to see um, to, to seeing Tim Shadbolt uh, when we get down there. So just uh, just make sure he's still uh, you still. Might be, <laughs> you might be lucky. I don't know whether he'll still be there. <laughs> Well, we shall see. Um, uh, it'll be whoever's at the helm. I'm sure it's. I'm uh, really looking forward to this conference. I mean, this this uh, the online AGM, the online event is, has just been so um, uh, has been so interesting to do, so challenging on a technology basis, and so rewarding actually in the end. But it will never replace a face to face conference, and so I'm very much looking forward to both in Bacargill, um and to Karapiro as well. Um, the next and potentially last item on the agenda is um, general business. I think we've we've got to the bottom of the um, uh, of the the agenda items that have content, uh, and so I'm happy to accept any general business. So Warren, John Curtis here, just um, keen to gain clarification. So it, from what I've just heard from Chris. The proceedings of the conference that was going to be held at Invercargill will be published as is. Is that correct? And there will be a new set of papers produced for the 2021 conference. Uh, yes. Not, not, a, not an easy um, situation to resolve satisfactorily, John. Um, and it is a bit of a hybrid model. So what we've done is uh, the papers that have been published this year will be available electronically. Well, they are available electronically. Um, and they will not be published in hard copy this year. Um, but they will be rolled up with the hard copy journal next year. Uh, and the presenters, um, including those presenters who uh, who, who delivered um, a very brief thumbnail of their uh, of their paper in the online event, uh, will also be invited to provide um, a presentation in in Vicargal next year as well. Uh, and whether it's um, whether it's an update or whether it's actually a full a fuller presentation, um, there's you know, there's there's some flexibility there as well. So it is, as I say, a bit of a hybrid model, um, but we think it's one that actually delivers. Uh, uh, delivers to our science audience um, what they need, but also delivers to our uh, our presenters, our authors, what they need as well. Oh, sorry, to, sorry to be thick, but I didn't understand that answer at all. Uh, so, so are we going to have a volume that's twice as long as normal? No, is the is the short answer to that because the volume so, of papers. Okay. The volume of the papers that was delivered in the online event um, and, and the ones that weren't uh, actually delivered online but were also part of this year's uh, crop of science uh, was um, less. There were a lot of papers that were withdrawn or not delivered because of um, interactions around, uh, around COVID. There were scientists who just clearly could not deliver what they had committed to deliver. So uh, it's a, a much smaller set of papers. Okay, understand. Uh, Swaran, it's Mike Manning. So just again for clarity, for those papers that were delivered in the virtual conference this year, they're all available electronically online now, are they? The well, the, in terms of the the presentations themselves, Mike. Uh, or do you I, mean I, the... I guess the, the more the paper that emanated from those presentations, because a lot of them were quite short, weren't they, Warren? So... Uh, yeah, the the the. But the presentation format was very short. We uh, and we, we mm. did that very deliberately, so the papers mm. themselves are considerably longer. Mm. Um, so obviously, the presentations are available on the on the YouTube channel. Um, actually, I, I think Marie, are you are you better placed to answer that question in terms of where we're at with all of the um, yep. fully fully typeset and published papers? The fully typeset and published papers are available online now, okay. as the 
82nd journal. Uh, and like Warren said, the paper version, the hard copy will be a combined 82, 83 version next year. It was a pragmatic decision. Thank you. Just to, just to clarify, I think some of the presentations on the webinar, they weren't actually papers. They were specially invited for the conference. That's right. The, the, the keynotes um, will not be published in, in, that, um, uh, in, that, in that style. Any other general business? Uh, if not, uh, I will draw this meeting to a close. Look, thank you um, one and all for your attendance. Um, I, I was, it was, we were never certain whether we're going to get a quorum or not. Uh, and I'm really delighted that we have and that we've um, managed to get through this AGM without, um, without major incident. Uh, as I said before, really looking forward to seeing you all in person either in Karapiro or in Invercargill or both. But if you have any, any questions that are, have arisen from the AGM or on any other matter to do with grasslands, please feel free to uh, either contact me directly or, uh, or through Marie at the, uh, at the grasslands office. Um, so thank you one and all, Merry Christmas. Uh, and I can now de declare this meeting closed. <laughs>